Okay. Functional equivalence. Uh, the issue with functional equivalence and models is uh, related to the, I the idea of black boxes and processes that are going on in black boxes. So for example, let's say you want to know something that you can't see, like what's going on on the inside of the sun. And that's a black box, kind of a funny idea because you know, the sun's pretty well lit, I would think, in there. But uh, we can only see what's going on on the surface of the sun. Now, we have ideas like belief in continuity, which in a world of discrete physics turns into a belief in uh, conservation of energy. And uh, that tells us that we expect that what's going on inside the sun is related to what's going on in the surface of the sun. Granting that, the surface of the sun is our interface into uh, a lower part of this process, which is the black box. Now, what we can do is we make a model and then we do the calculations of the model of what we think the inside might be like or what our model says uh, pretends that it's like and if we reproduce the surface and we could just assume computers are being used but it doesn't have to be uh, but if we reproduce uh, something that looks like the surface of the sun then we're doing pretty well okay now, we wouldn't really expect a model like that to ever be a perfect model. A perfect model would have to be able to predict every sunspot exactly when and where it would happen. Um, but we would, you know, be happy with a certain approximation. But even if we got a perfect model, we still wouldn't know that what was going on inside the black box part of the process, but we couldn't really see to discriminate different kinds of processes, uh, was what our perfect model said it was. Because there's alternate models can be perfect. Now, we can see what I'm talking about by thinking about a mathematical example. Let's say we have a black box that takes an X and a Y and as numbers and outputs a, a, an answer, A. Uh, if we put numbers in, thousands of numbers, and look at the output, and finally some mathematician or puzzle solver notices that he can model the answer as x squared minus y squared. So you take x, you multiply it by itself, uh, you take y and do the same, then you subtract uh, the latter from the former. And this always predicts what comes out of the box. Well, since it's a mathematical process, uh, we can imagine that that is the perfect model. But we still wouldn't know that that's really what's going on in the box in terms of a real process, right? In the box, mathematics has to take time into account. When time is in an equation, it's just another variable like any other. Mathematics doesn't treat it specially. But in the box, there has to be an actual process, like a computer or a person or some sort of a machine doing the calculation. And it might be doing some of any infinite number of other uh, equations that are functionally equivalent, but procedurally, they're different. You know, you can do the same equation as x minus y times x plus y. That's different. You know, instead of a couple of multiplications, it's got an addition and a subtraction. Instead, and instead of uh, uh, one subtraction, it's got a, uh, a multiplication. And those will take different amounts of time depending on how good the machine is at multiplication and addition or subtraction. And of course, as I say, there's an infinite number of other mathematically equivalent uh, but procedurally different uh, things that could be going on inside this black box, we'll never know because whichever of those models we invent uh, will predict the answer correctly. And since we only have the answer to go by, we only have the surface of the sun to go by, we won't know what's going on inside there unless we figure out a way to get information from directly in there. So a similar thing to this is uh, coordinate systems. You know, any uh, point in uh, three-dimensional Euclidean space can be put in terms of a Cartesian coordinate system or a polar coordinate system. And those are functionally equivalent. Now, we call these Euclidean spaces and act as if each of these particular coordinate systems, there is just a different way of saying the same thing. But the fact is that they are different. And it makes a real difference in a problem whether you use one or the other. The equations you get are very different, so how easy they are to calculate becomes very different. 
So, um, if you have a process in a black box that you can't look at yet, you'll never know uh, that your model is correct. And this is just a fundamental issue because when you look close enough, you will always get to the part of the process you can't see yet, that you are modeling um, with something that you just hope is a functional approximation, not even equivalent, but just a functional approximation. Now, Ptolemy had a system of celestial mechanics that had things going on, epic cycles and all kinds of crazy stuff. But they used it for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years because it was functionally approximate uh, to a more accurate view of how things moved. But it was functionally approximate enough to give good answers, very the best answers of those times about where the planets uh, and the stars would be at a particular time. So the idea of functional equivalence is really important in understanding uh, why I'm talking about reality as an idea as well, because um, we only have these models to go from. If we're the one inside that box making that calculation, we have to choose one of these things. And they are different, and yet we have to choose one and only one. If we choose more than one, we just have to do the calculation more than once. So we have to choose one. And it, that cannot... In, in the case of the mind, the one we choose is the process we choose to, to represent what's really going on in the world cannot be exactly the same because that's a black box to a degree. We only get perceptions. So I hope you can hear me. Everybody's asleep. They probably couldn't hear me. I'm not as loud as the cars, but it just makes me be quieter. But, uh, and, uh, but I think I hit the points that I wanted to make, so <laughs> how good that was. Okay.